Hi, uh, I'm John Shook. Uh, I'm here at the Lean Enterprise Institute uh, headquarters in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I just uh, returned from a couple of weeks uh, on the road visiting uh, companies, large and small, uh, different uh, industries, and that was preceded by uh, a few more weeks of doing the same thing, visiting different uh, uh, companies, organizations. And uh, there was a, a topic that kept, uh, it was a recurring theme everywhere I went, so I, I thought as I got back into the office here today on a quiet day, I'll just uh, uh, collect a few thoughts about it. And the topic was uh, leadership. Uh, everywhere I go, people want to talk about leadership and explore this, uh, uh, this big topic. That's nothing new, of course. Exploring leadership has been around uh, since before lean thinking, before continuous improvement, uh, before uh, discussions of management in companies, before we had companies. I think exploring leadership and what it is has been around since uh, exploring, I think you could say. And I came back, and, and as I was uh, thinking about it this morning, I, I looked on my desk, and, and realized there were a lot of books that have been arriving lately. Uh, one here is The Lean Turnaround by uh, uh, our dear friend Art Byrne, a famous leader of the, uh, the, uh, the Lean Transformation at the Wire Mold Company uh, about 20 years ago now. And uh, this is a, a great book about uh, what Art has learned from uh, leading this for over many years. Uh, another fellow from those, uh, from those same years in terms of experience of coming out of Danaher and and, and utilizing what was learned there in different organizations. George Koenigsegger has also written a great book about lean leadership. Uh, another one that's uh, recently just landed on, on my desk, you might know it, The Outstanding Organization by Karen Martin, about, uh, about uh, how in, in this also there's a lot of discussion of the role of the leader, managers, the role of coaches. Uh, Matthew May just came, came out with a new book, The Laws of Subtraction. Uh, which gives a different uh, spin, I think, and sometimes how we can do more by doing less. Uh, a book many of you probably don't know called Gold Play by uh, Paul Levy, the former CEO of the Beth Israel Deaconess Hospital in uh, Boston. Uh, le leadership lessons from the soccer field, where in addition to being a, uh, a CEO of a large organization, uh, Paul points out that he's learned so much about leadership from coaching girls soccer. Uh, another that uh, I think many of you may know by Jerry Bussell on the anatomy of a lean leader, uh, looking at parallels and leadership from Abraham Lincoln and, and many lean leaders that uh, Jerry has known over the years. Uh, another one here that's not at all a lean book called You Can't Predict a Hero. Uh, and I think this one is indica indicative, I think, of what most people think of when they bring up the topic of leadership, which is the leader as hero. And I think we're often looking for that hero to come in and save the day for us, perhaps ride in on a stallion, uh, tell everyone what to do, and solve the crisis of the day. Uh, you know, I, I, there, there are places for different kinds of leadership, I'm sure. But I think mostly what we're looking at when we explore how lean leadership informs, the, the, the lean thinking and practice informs the, uh, the, the practice of leadership, I think that takes us in a, in a different direction. And, and, um, I thought I'd talk about that just a little bit uh, today, as I'm really still st still all fresh and fresh in my mind. But if we often think in terms of this this, dram this dramatic heroic leader, uh, one of the things I noticed in my travels in the last few weeks is that people spend a lot of time uh, wishing that their boss was different, wishing that their boss was the heroic leader that they've uh, they've learned about. Of course, many of them who have more directive bosses also wish their boss was different and that their boss was less directive and would give them a little more freedom. Um, and there's this, this uh, yin and yang that goes back and forth of, of uh, people wishing their boss was either less directive or more directive. And I think that's an interesting thing to, to, uh, to, to, to consider. Um, on the opposite spectrum of this, this leader, the heroic leader on the, on, the, on the stallion riding in to save the day, is kind of this modern, enlightened, modern manager uh, who never tells anyone what to do, uh, but also takes kind of a hands-off, laissez-faire uh, attitude, and abdicates his or her responsibility, letting people just kind of uh, sink or swim, and they often end up uh, sinking as they try to swim. Um, if we think about what lean practice, what lean thinking uh, in, uh, informs us regarding the role of leaders, there's a couple of things that come, come to my mind. That 
first of all, as with all lean practice, everything begins with grasping the situation, with understanding thoroughly, deeply, exactly what is happening. And that means what is hap happening out in the external environment, if we're thinking about leadership and, and organizations, what's happening in the external world, uh, what's happening with the customer, with the marketplace, uh, what's happening with the environment in which we are, are doing business. And that helps set our direction, our strategic direction as, as an organization. Um, equally important, uh, of course, is uh, grasping the situation of what's happening internally. What are the capabilities uh, that are represented by the people that we have, by the organization as it's, current, as it's configured now? Uh, what capabilities uh, are, are enabling us to achieve or, or, or perhaps fail to achieve the objectives we have? And the third thing we have to, as a leader, uh, grasp the situation of is ourselves. Uh, what are our own capabilities? What are our strengths and what are our weaknesses? And, and that becomes part of the environment that we, that we have to understand, that we have to grasp. Having grasped the situation uh, in, any, in any environment, including this topic of leadership, the next thing is to be aware of where do we need to go? Um, what's the uh, target condition? What are the objectives that we must uh, uh, attain? Uh, establishing those is, 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 of course, a role of leadership. But that's also something that's going to be shifting in terms of understanding the gap between where we are now, which we grasp the situation, and where we need to go. Um, and as the dynamic environment that we work in required, makes us recognize that we're going to have a constantly shifting environment that we have to nav navigate through, um, the same thing occurs as we look internally to grasp the situation of our capabilities, because they're always uh, changing uh, in, 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 in light of the change environment that we're facing every day. So I think at, at the end of the day, uh, you could argue that the most important capability that, that, that leaders have as informed by lean thinking is the capability of capability development. Uh, capability for building capabilities, as uh, Professor uh, Taka Fujimoto at the University of Tokyo uh, calls it, it's kind of like double loop learning. It's double loop is in terms of how we can build our organization's capabilities for continually to evolve itself, uh, both in an organizational capability sense, but also the capabilities, the skills of each individual member. And where does that begin uh, for any of us? Uh, it begins with ourselves. Um, another uh, thing that lean, te lean thinking teaches us is that we're all leaders, uh, whether I'm the CEO, uh, the vice president of operations, I'm the CFO, I'm a plant manager, I'm a team leader, uh, I'm an informal leader amongst in, within my uh, w uh, group of, of, of peers where I do my work. We're all teaching uh, all the time, as Coach John Wooden of UCLA uh, uh, used to say. And we're all leading all the time as well, and we're leading by example. So that's where we have to, have to begin, uh, I believe. And another of my favorite books actually about uh, leadership is one that LEI published uh, some years ago called Follow the Learner. Uh, we know what follow the, follow the leader is. Uh, leaders have to be learners. And one of the things we have to be learning about is how we influence others through our own actions so that we are developing our capability to develop capabilities in others. Uh, Sammy Bari is a dentist, often known as the lean dentist, um, and uh, in Jacksonville, Florida. And I think that sets a good model for us to think about what lean leadership is all about. And as uh, in my travels, one of the one of the many companies that I, that I recently visited was uh, Herman Miller in Western Michigan, uh, in, in Zealand and Holland, Michigan, and where I saw great examples of problem solving occurring, a true problem solving culture that's emerged in at least parts of the parts of that company that that I that I have seen. And um, could you say that that's uh, the result of leadership? I think you can but not necessarily this traditional heroic leadership model that I think we often have in our minds. Uh, rather, the leadership there is engaged uh, with each other, everyone there being a, a leader, I think. And as uh, Matt Long, uh, Furman Miller, put it, we're out there solving problems every day, everyone. We aren't just solving problems, we're developing problem solvers. So I think that uh, both the spirit and the action embodied in that is uh, maybe a simpler way of, of expressing this notion of capability for capability development. 
So that's my thoughts uh, so far today on this, this uh, Friday. And uh, as I think through further, uh, I think I'll share those with you again later as well. Thank you.